So I'm going to review with you again some more information, and today we're going to introduce some new information. So um, you should remember that we learned that density is mass over volume. I'm going to draw my triangle. So density is mass over volume, so my density goes here. What this means then, if I break that formula down, is when I cover my density, I'm left with mass over volume, D equals M over V. That can be measured in grams per cubic centimeter. That can be measured in grams per, goodness, grams per milliliter. And my D here equals density. If I'm solving for mass, it's density times volume. So my mass equals density times volume. Um, mass can be measured in grams or it could be measured in kilograms. And my M here equals mass. And then I can solve for volume. Volume is mass divided by density. Volume can be measured in cubic centimeters or milliliters, and my V here is volume. So I just wanted to refresh your memory about how to use this density triangle. Remember, if it's above and below, I divide. If it's side by side, I would multiply. Um, Newton's second law of motion, which I introduced to you previously here in your journal, tells us that force is mass times acceleration. Well, there's a force triangle for that. So I'm gonna draw another triangle here. Mass times acceleration, those have to be side by side, which only leaves the top for me to put my F. F is force, M is mass, A is acceleration. So I'm gonna put that this is Newton's second law. And I'm gonna remember here that force, F, equals mass times acceleration. Force is measured in Newtons. And F equals force. And Newtons are abbreviated with an N. If I'm solving for acceleration, acceleration is force divided by mass. Um, acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. Guys, you're going to learn that when I graph acceleration, the graph for that looks like a parabola. Um, and the A here stands for acceleration. And then the next one, mass. If I'm solving for mass, it's force divided by acceleration. So M equals F divided by A. Mass can be measured in kilograms, can be measured in grams. And my M here stands for mass. Again, above and below I divide, side by side I multiply. You have another triangle we've learned this year, and it is your speed triangle. So I'm going to refresh you with that one. I'm going to draw my triangle. Um, I can remember this, remember, with S, T, and the D is on top. Um, side by side, I multiply. Above and below, I divide. Here, if I cover my S, speed is distance over time. Speed can be measured in meters per second. It can be measured in miles per hour. Um, and the S here stands for speed. Remember, there are different types of speed. You can have average speed and instantaneous speed can also solve for time. Time here would be distance divided by speed. Um, time is measured in minutes, hours, seconds. The T here stands for time. And then finally, I could solve for distance. So distance would be speed times time. So D equals S times T. Distance um, could be meters, kilometers, miles. 
Um, and the D here stands for distance. So as you see, these three triangles, I can solve for any variable within those triangles. However, as I showed you when we were looking at some speed calculations, you always must check your units. So always check units to see if you need to convert. If my answer is in miles per hour and my units are given to me in meters per second, then obviously I need to convert my units before I can do my math. Um, you've always got to pay attention to that. So this is a wrap up kind of of our three triangles that we've been using. Let's talk now specifically about law two. So in my journal, on the next blank page, I'm gonna write law two. This is Newton's second law of motion. And Newton's second law tells us, it's very simple actually, um, that force equals mass times acceleration. If I'm pushing a heavy um, grocery cart and a light grocery cart with the same amount of force, then the heavy cart will move the furthest or the, the least furthest. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna draw a ball. We're gonna say this one is 10 grams. I'm gonna draw a ball. We're gonna say this one is five grams. So let's say I put a force of two Newtons here and a force of two Newtons here. So this ball would move the furthest because its mass is smaller. So there's one example. Let's look at another way that we can think about this law. So this time I have two boxes and they are both 10 grams. So one there and one here. And this time I put a force of five Newtons and I put a force of 25 Newtons. This time the mass is the same. The only thing that is different is the amount of force being used. This one would move the furthest because a greater amount of force was used. So if my objects weigh different and the same force is used, the lighter one will move further. If my objects weigh the same and a greater force is used on one, the one with the greater force will have the most motion. So that kind of sums up what you need to know for law two. Let's talk now about Newton's third law of motion. So we're gonna label this page now, law three. show up on here let's see and this law says for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction every action there is an equal and opposite reaction and we can summarize this by saying action reaction so some example here would be mm, let's use this I have a rocket I'm gonna really not draw a rocket well am I um hmm Okay, I've got a rocket, and this rocket has a mass. Let's say that he has a mass of, and these numbers, let's say it's a toy rocket. Let's say he's a mass of 50 grams. And let's say that he pushes off the, the ground with the force 
of let me get some red. So it ignites, there's an explosion, and the explosion pushes on the ground with the force of, and I am totally making up numbers here, 100 newtons. Let's say with gravity, the mass of this rocket had, so 50 grams with gravity, and this math is not right. Let's say that he had pushed down on the ground with a force of um, 80 newtons. So the explosion pushed back up on the rocket. So the overall motion of this rocket is to lift up off the ground. So when the explosion happened pushing down, the ground pushed up on the rocket and caused the rocket to take off. Um, same thing can be said, let's say you're riding in a car. So let's say you're sitting in the car, like inside here's your windshield, you've got your dashboard, steering wheel's here. Let's say that in your dashboard you have a can of soda. Not sure why you would do that, but you know, or let's say it's a, it's a glass of tea. And you're driving forward. So you're going forward on the road. You're going forward with a speed of 55 miles per hour. So let's say that all of a sudden you had to hit your brakes. You would have to stop the car. Maybe a squirrel ran out in front of your car. Um, this is going to combine a couple of laws here. So the law of one, inertia tells us that an object at rest will remain at rest and an object in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. When I stop my car, the car may stop, but this can of tea is not um, tied down in that car in any way. So it's going to continue moving at the speed that the car had been moving. So that T will then go into my dashboard at a speed equal to what we were traveling, 55 miles per hour. So it would move forward and hit the dash. At that point, it would um, tilt back, spill, and, and make a big mess in the car. Um, but for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And I'm going to show you some demos in class, if I have not already, exemplifying these three.